Hi guys, welcome back to the next part of this tutorial series, and uh, this is probably the one that um, most of you have been dreading. It is the programming one, but don't worry, it's not that complicated. If I can figure it out, you can as well. I'm not a programmer. So uh, let's go ahead and start by opening up the, um, the SDK folder wherever it's wherever you have it installed. You're going to find all of the code inside of the development folder under SRC uh, with sense for uh, source and you will find Red X game. Uh, open up that folder and the classes subfolder. This is where all of the uh, the code for the game is. And we're basically going to be adding um, new code uh, new .uc files um, for our vehicles, and you can see that there's already so many, um, so many uh, classes already. So .uc files are classes. Um, there's so many of these already for um, all of the vehicles, and you have tons of these as example assets or sorry, example code that you can look into and see how they were set up. So because we've been using the medium tank as an example. We're going to go ahead and use the medium tank classes, the, the code used for the medium tank, to sort of start, to, to have like a starting point so that we don't have to, to type everything from scratch, because that's kind of dumb and pointless. <laughs> so I have Notepad++ open. You can use Visual Studio, whatever you want. I'm not a hardcore programmer. So I have a plugin for this, which is a file browser. It's called Light Explorer can find it yourself. Um, so I'm basically going to open up the medium tank uh, .uc which is this one. <coughs> so uh, rx vehicle medium tank. Let's open that up. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is save a copy of this file as the name of the super tank. So I'm going to change the name to super tank and you want to make sure that you have the .uc file extension and I'm also going to copy the name of the actual file without the name uh, without the extension um, because that's going to be the name of the class so save it as a copy and make sure you have it open you're not editing the medium tank so here I can see in the tab it says super tank .uc so I know I'm opening the right one uh, so this is the class name we need to make sure the class name is the same as the file name so that's why I copied it so you can just paste it directly here so uh, the way that uh, Unreal Script works is that it's an object oriented scripting language uh, what that means is um, you can basically create a, a new class this is a this is a class based off of uh, an existing class so we are extending um, uh, the super tank is really an extension of the vehicle shredded class which is our tank uh, class system so that's what we're doing here uh, the next section all the way up to default properties these are your variables and your custom functions for uh, that specific class for the for the one that you're you're making um, so for the medium tank, we have things like the antennas. Uh, they're being attached to the top of the top of the turret. So because we don't have any antennas, I can just go ahead and select all of this and get rid of it. <coughs> uh, so finally, we have the default properties. This is really where all of our properties are defined. Um, so there's a lot of things to go over. If I scroll all the way down, there's tons of stuff. <laughs> so we have a, a few default properties such as your max speed, uh, camera lag, turning in place, your health. Um, yeah, most of these are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, then afterwards you have this little bit of code, which is actually adding um, a separate class as an object in your in your in your vehicle. 
So this is adding the, the simulation physics of this specific class, which you can find. Um, let me open up the Explorer. I believe that's located under Source. Uh, I think it's an engine. What is it called? S vehicles. Yeah. So this is adding this bit of code all of this as an object or, or as um, a component inside of your vehicle. Oops. Um, so this is what's handling most of the tank physics of uh, your vehicle. Um, similarly, if I opened up a Humvee, which is not a tank. Where's the Humvee? Right here. The Humvee has something very similar, but it's calling in the UDK vehicle sim car which you can find a, a version of it here but we're using a different one for that which you can find under UDK base and then uh, vehicle sim car so that's the one where it's grabbing all of the car physics and adding it to the Humvee we're not going to be worrying about that, but if you wanted to have a car with car properties, this is how you do it. So uh, you probably are best off just copying the Humvee um, and then tweaking your values from here rather than the medium tank. So because our tank is a tank, we're going to take a look at what's in here. So this is mostly going to be uh, in the last video where we're going to fine tweak all of these parameters so that um, our vehicle handles the way that we want it to. Okay, scrolling down, you can see uh, we categorized our, our stuff into various components. So this is, this is the visual component of um, our tank. So we have the skeletal mesh, the uh, animation tree, the physics asset, and morph targets. So because we don't have morph targets, we can just get rid of this uh, this line that says morph targets. And because we don't have any skill, uh, antenna meshes, these two are custom parameters uh, for the antennas. And because we removed them from way up here, where there were certain variables, uh, we need to make sure that these are removed because they're no longer they they no longer exist in the class. So get rid of those. So you can also define a separate skeletal mesh for the purchase terminal menu. Um, we usually scale it down slightly so that it fits into the scene because we found that the Mammoth Tank, for example, or the Chinook were just way too big to fit into that scene so we made a separate version of them which was uh, scaled down a little bit and then you can define which mesh that is from here. It's basically just another skeletal mesh. And uh, going down some more we have the vehicle seat and weapon properties. So um, vehicle seats are things like your driver, your passenger, and whatever else. It's mostly driver, one driver, and then passenger. Seat zero is always your uh, your driver, and uh, you have your passengers as one, two, three, whatever. So it's basically an index. You can have as many of these as you want. Uh, in here, we define things like which weapon to use. So this is another script, another class, so the, ma uh, the medium tank is using this, this specific guy which is getting called into the gun class. So uh, this, the driver has the main gun. Um, so then there are certain controls for where, um, where the gun can fire. There are controls for the turret controls, so if you remember in the previous video, in the animation tree we had the turret rotate and the turret pitch constraint nodes. That's uh, the controller names that we define are plugged in here. Uh, the gun pivot, this is actually the name of the bones. So the bone names need to be hooked in. In the medium tank it was called something else, it was called main turret yaw and main turret pitch. But, I, but we named them as, um, I believe it's, it was B turret yaw and B turret pitch. Right, so these names would basically get plugged into here. 
then uh, this part you need to make sure to leave alone because this we have a fixed naming convention for the cameras. This is basically where the socket um, gets called. So if you remember, we made the cam view 3P socket on our skeletal mesh. That's where this gets hooked in. Then you can create a uh, an offset on the camera, uh, so you can control it in any direction. We'll go over that in the last video. And uh, you have the muzzle flash light, so anytime your tank fires, um, it'll create a light source, so like a point light inside of the editor. So we'll basically, just do something similar to creating a light source, which. Uh, you can define the, the properties of on your own. So it's just a standard light component, maybe you want it to be red or something. Like you can do something like that. So it's just going to generate one of these anytime your tank fires. It's a dynamic light, so no worries. This is basically also defined in a separate uh, script or class. So we can find this one as um, Rx light and then tank muzzle flash. So you can define uh, you know, the brightness, the radius, um, how it shifts over time. So neat things that you can find tweak. Uh, not going to be going over that, I'm just going to plug the same one in directly. Um, passenger, if you want to give it a gun control you can do that as well. That's how we did it for the Chinook. So the uh, the passengers, they have the uh, the Gatling guns on the side, so you can define them uh, the same way. Uh, scrolling down some more, you have the uh, material and effects properties. So here we can define the left and right uh, tank track materials. So if I open up the skeleton mesh, you remember we had different indexes for. Our, uh, or different material IDs for the tank tracks. So that's index 1 and index 2 and uh, we basically have to figure out which one is the left and which one is the right. So index 1 is our, our right tank tracks and index 2 is our left tank track. So in the code we would set it up the same way. So index 2 is our left right I think yeah so these would be the other way around then we have uh, inputs for our physical materials so if you remember we made these two these are basically the um, the physics properties of, of the vehicle without um, any any vehicle physics so more like think of a, a metal crate and if it's a dynamic object you could blow it around what kind of physical properties does it have like how much does it bounce how much friction does it have that's where this gets plugged in then you have um, your effects so things like uh, your gun your muzzle flash uh, things like uh, fire if your tank takes a certain amount of damage you want to catch fire you can do it this way that's where you do it then you have uh, particle effects for your wheels uh, you can define the different surface types, so dirt, grass, water, snow, concrete, all that stuff. You can plug in different values in here. You have um, your explosion, so when your vehicle blows up, which particle system to generate and which socket it should attach to. So if you remember, uh, we made the VH death socket, which is located way in the center, right here. It's called BH death. Um, yeah, so that's where you plug that in. So next, you have your damage, your morph target damage parameters. So you can define things like which bone has the influence. So if you remember in the medium tank, we had dummy bones for just figuring out where they are. That's where this uh, gets hooked in. Then you have the name of the node in the animation tree that we defined. And then you can define how much health uh, it takes for it to go from 0 to 1, or rather, no blend. 
to full blend. And uh, that's it. And uh, oh, it's a damage prop name. This basically gives you a um, uh, a trigger almost, which uh, triggers something in the material parameter so that the vehicle looks a bit damaged. And then you can define them over here. So um, if I go to the medium tank and I open up the material, um, the material instance, under damage we have these damage one two three four. That's exactly what it's uh, modulating in in the code. So you can see uh, damage one. Oops. Damage one. You have damage two, three, and four. So it's referencing these names, and uh, you can, as soon as I increase the value, you can kind of see they start to look beat up, right? So stuff like that, um, that's where all of this is getting handled. So because we're not using blend shapes, we have to remove them. And these things can only, uh, sorry, these uh, material pr changes, they're hooked up only to the blend shapes, which is kind of dumb, but that's how it worked in UDK. So um, unfortunately, we have to remove them because we don't have any damage or we don't have any more targets. But um, I'm sure you can figure out a way to hook them directly. I'm sure it's possible. I just don't know how to do that because I'm not a programmer. So again, get rid of this part because we can't use it. We have no blend shapes. Um, okay, what else? Next we have the vehicle audio components. So you have your tank engine. It actually says Scorpion engine, uh, but that's fine. Uh, in here we define the sound cue for our tank. So we take a look at the medium tank sound cue. It's basically, I don't know if you can hear, it's super quiet. Uh, let me maybe... Nope, we still can't hear it. Okay, let me, uh... Nope, it's not working. But anyways, it's um, a very quiet uh, looping sound of the engine. <coughs> it's a... Uh, maybe we can uh, just look for it. It might be louder. Sync to browser. I don't know if you can hear it. But whatever. Um, yeah. It's a continuous looping sound and then um, it gets modulated, the, the pitch gets modulated uh, in the code. Which is something you don't have to worry about because um, it's handled in the parent class. So in RX vehicle treaded. So um, you can probably find it in here. It's somewhere buried in there. I mean, I can already see the pitch controls or the sound pitch controls for it. So, <laughs> yeah, um, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, going back to the audio components, you have the enter sound and the exit sound. So you can plug those in. And finally, we have the wheels and the suspension. So, uh, if you remember the animation tree, uh, we named each of our uh, controller names with a specific name, and that's where these get referenced in. So, similar to um, how we're bringing in vehicle physics, or the tank's physics, from the uh, sim tank class uh, by creating a, an object within the vehicle, the same thing is being done with all of the wheels. So they have a separate class for just the wheels. Uh, so if we take a look at the medium tank wheel, it has things like the radius, the suspension travel, the suspension speed, lots of other properties like how limited slip, whatever thing, I don't know, most of this stuff, but the default settings usually work pretty well. Um, so you can define them here, 
and we're going to be updating all of these. So let's start by uh, getting rid of all of the wheels except for just four of them. We'll start from the wheels and we'll work backwards. Uh, okay, so because the uh, medium tank has 18 wheels, uh, seven on each side that are on the bottom and two on the top, so for both sides that ends up being uh, 18 wheels. So we just need the four because the super tank only has four. And um, let's go ahead and uh, we need to make a copy of the uh, the wheel. So I have that open already because I clicked it and opened it. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to save as and change the name to Super Tank Wheel. And I'm going to make sure to keep this at the uh, extension there. So save it and then copy the name. There you go. Uh, let's go ahead and measure out the uh, the wheel radius. So we could do that inside the editor. So, oh, oops, what's happening? Nothing's happening. Everything's okay. So I'm just gonna uh, bring in the skeletal mesh, and I'm gonna change the view to. Uh, side view. <coughs> so you can just simply hold your cursor in the middle of the of the wheel, hold down the middle mouse click to bring up the tape measure and just move down the mouse or move it to any direction. So we could say something like 40 degree or 40 units is the radius of the wheel. So that's a good handy way of getting the accurate radius. So set it to 40 and I'm going to I remember what the uh, what the max displacement value was which was 35 for the wheels in the animation tree so we have to match that. So suspension travel this means how far up this can go and it can only go up to 35 units. The speed is how quickly you can go, so you can play around with that later. We don't need to change the bone offset or the steering factor because this is a tank, it's not really going to use the steering factor. But if you had um, something like the Humvee, uh, scrolling all the way down to the uh, the wheel component, you can actually define the steering factor uh, in each individual control. So we only want the front wheels to have steering factor as one. We don't want the back wheels to have any steering factor. So looking at the hum, hum these uh, wheels, steer factor by default is set up to zero. And then for the front tires, we override it to one so that they turn. Um, so going back to the super tank wheels, we don't really need to worry about steering factors because this is a tank. And because the tank wheels, they ha we have to define the left and right sides manually. Um, so that way that it knows which wheels are on which side and which wheels need to go forward or backwards depending on uh, when you're turning. So I'm just going to leave that as is. I'm going to save it. I'm going to copy this name and I'm going to paste it here on all of these so that uh, we're using the super tank wheel properties. So the bone name we need to update them. So opening up the medium tank or super tank skeletal mesh because I don't remember off the top of my head. It is called B wheel FR. Pretty simple. I probably should have remembered that but I didn't. That's okay. That's why we have uh, to go back every now and then. So B wheel FR for front. And we know that the controller name would just be FR. So I'm going to change the name of the object that it's creating to FR. And this is on the right side. So 
that's correct. So let's do that to the rest of them. Copy the bone name. So this could be uh, front left. So erase that. Front left. Left. You just have to make sure that you're going through all of these and they're all correct, otherwise you're going to get uh, warnings whenever you're compiling your code. And the side we need to change to left, because it's on the left side. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Uh, you know what, rather than renaming all of those completely, I'm just going to copy these. I'm going to replace them. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the index number is correct so you don't want the same index number you want to increase so this would be two and this would be three so this could be our rear right so I'm just going to replace the, the F with an R and this would be rear left so again same thing replace the F with the R's And that's it for the wheels. I'm going to leave the audio components as they are so that we're just using the medium tank sounds. Um, same thing for all of the wheel particles as well as the tank explosion. So for the vehicle effects, uh, we only have two. We have the muscle flash and we have the tank catching fire. So I'm going to remove all but two of them because that's all we need. So uh, let's start with the fire. So if we open up the socket editor, remember the name is called Damage Fire 01. So I'm going to change the, uh, the socket, which is all the way at the end. So this one right here, effect socket, to Damage Fire 01. And uh, we're using the steam smoke, which is not what I want to use. I want to use the fire. So let's find the fire particle effect, which is under effects, effects wheels or vehicle. And you will find engine fire. That's the one that we want to use. So uh, a way to copy the reference, you just click it in the content browser and hit Control C. This will copy just the reference of it. So if I make a new line, if I hit paste, it's pasting the type and the location. So it's copying the reference. So we want to replace the reference of the smoke particle with the fire particle. And that's about it. You get the fire started. So the effects start tag and the stop tag these two are already defined um, in one of the UDK or UT vehicle systems so they already exist and um, you could potentially change when um, the vehicle catches fire so if I open up the, the, the parent class uh, the RX vehicle class which is the main component uh, there's a certain parameter in here which let me see if I can find it um, so damage, fire damage threshold, or is it damage smoke threshold? I think this is the one. Damage smoke threshold. So you would copy this if you want to change when your vehicle catches fire. Copy this uh, property and paste it in in here. So maybe just paste it here. And this basically acts as a percentage. Um, so at twenty five percent. Of your vehicle health, that's when um, that's when the smoke or the fire or this this tag will uh, will begin, and or will rather get kicked in, and then it will kick in the fire effect as a result. So uh, you can change that individually if you wish to. We just have a default at 25%, so you don't even need to have it. Um, next thing is the medium tank. 
<laughs> or sorry, the uh, the muzzle flash. So, the effect socket is probably the first thing we should look into. So our effect socket is called muzzle muzzle flash socket. So we want to change that to muzzle flash socket. This is where our tank will shoot from. And the effects start tank is actually defined in the uh, the weapon parameter or the weapon class. So if I look and find the medium tank weapon, it's making a tag or it's creating a tag called main gun every time the gun fires. So every time this tag is called, then uh, you can see it says FX start tag. So every time that tag gets called, then it triggers the muzzle flash particle effect on the effect socket. Right? Makes sense? So the same thing is being done with the recoil. So anytime the gun tag is being called, it is triggering the recoil effect. And um, the other thing is that uh, if I go back to the parent vehicle class, the recoil name is actually being defined in here somewhere. You can look for it, or it might be in the um, the treaded class, it could be, I'm not sure where it is, but it's being defined in one of the parent classes. So uh, you don't, and it and it always has the uh, the name set up um, as recoil. Yep, that's correct. And um, the the standard name that we're using for the recoil trigger is the one that's already defined in the property. If you remember, we copied this node and then the controller name was called recoil. This is being called in um, in one of the parent classes, so it might be in the in the uh, in the RX vehicle, or it might be in the RX vehicle treaded, wherever that is. Treaded, this one. I think it might be in here. Nope, it's not in there. Must be here. Yep. So it's in here. It's somewhere doing something. So that's where that's getting called. Um, so it'll do the kickback every time that happens. Um, let's go ahead and update the references for the physical materials. So going back to the content browser, going to the materials folder. Let's copy the physical material for both the driving and the non-driving states. So this is the non-driving. Let's place it. Let's take the driving state, copy the reference, go back to the notepad, and paste it. And let's save right now just in case something happens. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this part. So this is where we define the turret controls. Because we copied the uh, the uh, turret constraint nodes from the animation tree of the medium tank, uh, we don't need to worry about the names. So the the names of these two nodes, the the yaw and the and the pitch, they're called turret turret rotate and turret pitch. That's what we define in the controller name. So down here. These two are being referenced under control or under turret controls. So make sure those are set up, both of them. And then you want to define the gun pivot points as the bone names of those two bones. So we know that the bone names are B turret yaw and B turret pitch. So let's update them as B turret yaw and B turret pitch. Uh, these are important because um, if you don't have them hooked up then uh, the vehicle doesn't really know where to start a reference point or where the reference point of the turret is so that it can align it to where you're actually aiming.
Okay, now the gun socket. This is where the projectile comes out, which is called muzzle flash socket. If you remember, we hooked it up in the uh, in the vehicle effects thing. It's a muzzle flash socket right here. I'm just going to copy that, paste it here, and uh, let's make. Or before, uh, you know what? Let's make a um, a weapon class so that our super tank has its own weapon. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to open up the medium tank weapon and I'm just going to save as. So, oops. Try that again. Save as. I'm just going to rename it to super tank. Make sure you have the extension before saving and then replace this name of the, of the class. Okay, uh, so inventory group, or rather let's start from the top. Uh, this is the component that's controlling the distant sound effect. So in Renegade X, I'm sure you've noticed that tanks and explosions have sound effects from really far away. Uh, this is basically just creating um, a new sound variable that we can plug in or a new property that we can plug in something like for example uh, we have a fire sound uh, because we're making a new component which is creating a distant sound uh, we can plug that in so that's what this part is doing uh, then going to the default properties inventory group is um, actually what is defining the the icon that's being used in the UI so I'm not entirely sure how the UI component works, uh, but basically it has something to do with adding a new keyframe in the flash animation files. And in that new frame, you would define uh, or you would swap the texture out for the, the vehicle that you want to use or like a new vehicle. That part I'm not really 100% on, so I can't really cover that part. Then you have uh, your clip size, your initial, so setting uh, the maximum and initial clip size to 999 will just give you infinity. It's not actually 999, it is actually infinity, it's just that's how you write it as. Uh, clip size is one, so it shoots one uh, shot, and then it has to reload. Shot count, um, it's how many, uh, it's the ammo consumption, so every time you fire, how much ammo should it consume? One, that's right. Reload after every shot, yes. We want that because there's only one in the clip size. You have the reload speeds. And you also have the fire interval speeds. Fire intervals are if you have more than one, um, what do you call it, uh, ammo in your magazine or in, in your thing. So like Humvee, for example, it has 100 bullets and then it has to reload. So this would be 100 in, in the Humvee. Or I could just open up the Humvee uh, weapon. So it has a clip size of 100, and then it has reload time, which is 2 seconds. But then you also have the fire interval, which is uh, firing a new shot every 0 0.11 seconds. Right? Right. Um, going down, we have the reload sounds. So those are the sound cues from the medium tank. Uh, Yeah, cool, right? So you just copy and paste them in. Uh, then you have the trigger tags for the primary and alt fire. Um, we don't actually have an alt fire. And, uh, but if you wanted to have a, uh, a vehicle like the Mammoth Tank, which has uh, two different weapons, um, you want to use a different tag for the uh, for the secondary fire so you can create a different effect for a different muzzle flash effect uh, in a different location or in a different socket uh, when any time you fire. So here you could have uh, different tags for the primary and the secondary. Uh, you need to define the parent class uh, so this is the actual medium tank class uh, so I'm just going to copy the name of the super tank vehicle class and I'm going to paste it in here. This is the same as the, as the file name. 
So again, the fire interval, uh, we don't really need to worry about it because uh, because we're only firing one shot at a time. And then you have the uh, spread, so you can set it to whatever spread you want the cannon to fire at. You have the recoil impulse. This is actually different from um, the, what do you call it, the animation tree uh, recoil. So it's not the same thing as the, the barrel getting pushed because uh, this doesn't actually create any impulse. This is just pushing the barrel back and forward. What the recoil impulse does is it physically applies uh, force and pushes the vehicle backwards anytime you fire. So you probably notice it on a medium tank or any other vehicle, whenever you fire, it kind of kick backs the entire vehicle. So you, not only do you have the force feedback uh, of the cannon being fired, but you also have the barrel uh, going back and forward from the animation tree. So you have two layers of effects happening at the same time. So you can define uh, how much to kick back. It's a negative value because it's kicking back. If you have a positive value, it will kick forward, which makes no sense. So you can set this to whatever. Has recoil, yes. Um, because this is checked, uh, it's set to true, it's going to enable this part. And um, next up we have check if barrel is inside world geometry before firing. So we had an issue where um, you could shoot through walls if your barrel was going through. So we had an issue like that with the uh, with specifically the, uh, the medium tank going through like the airstrip and you could fire directly at the master control terminal which is kind of dumb. So this just does a check to see if that's doable or not. Um, and if it if it does go through, then it won't fire the cannon. Next up we have the weapon fire sound. So for the primary and the secondary, you can see the primary is set as an index of 0. Secondary is set as an index of 1. So here we define the sound. And the fire type is a projectile. So it's not a hit scan weapon, so it's not set to uh, instant hit um, because then it's a projectile and then finally you, you define the um, what projectile to fire uh, so for the medium tank there's a separate class for the actual projectile and it has things like um, ambient sound which is like when it whizzes by your head what kind of sound do you hear the effect of the actual or um, the particle effect of the cannon itself, or the projectile, which is a cannon. So the uh, the particle effects looks like a cannon. Then you have the impact effects on different surfaces, so dirt, stone, concrete. You can define the particles for it, as well as the sounds. Then you have uh, speed, lifespan, damage, damage radius. Um, there's a lot of stuff here. So, uh, yeah. You basically take uh, this class, copy it, and paste it in here. I'm not going to create a new projectile class uh, just because it's quicker and it makes the, the tutorial shorter. And then finally the distant fire sound which is being created here. Uh, so you can have a distant version of a sound effect. And uh, finally we have the crosshair MIC which stands for Material Instance Constant. So you can find this guy, which is uh, under miscellaneous for an uh, asset base. I believe it's under UI, and then the tank, which is this one, is being used. So you can change the crosshair type if you wish to. Um, and then for the AI, just tell them, yeah, this thing has splash damage, so you can hit near the feet or near the character and it'll still apply damage. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the vehicle class, or the vehicle weapon class. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to copy the class name and I'm going to paste it in the seat weapon class. So right here.
that's where we were before we went uh, went off to uh, the weapon class. So that's the seat part covered. We'll, we'll uh, fine tune the camera positioning uh, in the last video. Uh, you have the same attributes as here for uh, the passenger, but we don't give it a gun class because that's not the Renegade formula. Um, yeah, again, we can define all of the, uh, the fine tweak parameters in the last video. Uh, so let's go ahead and set up the the geometry, the skeleton mesh, the animation tree, and the physics asset. So let's go find our vehicle class, or sorry, our, our vehicle package, and copy the skeleton mesh, or copy the reference name at least, paste it here, do the same thing with the physics asset, paste, and the animation tree. So there we go. And I'm also going to copy the skeletal mesh and paste it into the skeletal mesh for PT, meaning purchase terminals. Save that. If you want to, you could increase the draw scale size, which is uh, just uh, the size of the vehicle. I don't recommend it because I think scale should be just determined directly in um, in the actual max file or in Maya file. And uh, you should try to keep this at one. Uh, if you change it, the, the vehicle attributes would need to get re retweaked, which is really stupid and annoying. Um, I'm going to go over all of this in the last video because this is all about fine tweaking. And uh, maybe same with this thing. Uh, this this entire top area is really just fine tweaking the vehicle parameters, of how it drives around. <coughs> So, uh, I think that's about it. So let's go ahead and compile the code. If you don't know how to compile the code, it's really simple because we saved it um, into where our code is located, so into the Renix game. Uh, where is it? RX vehicle super tank. Okay, there it is. So it's located over here. Uh, it's in the same script. So anytime you edit one of these uh, or create new ones, the next time you run the game, it will compile. Uh, it will ask you to compile scripts. So um, uh, you want to make sure that anytime you're compiling scripts, you're using the 32-bit uh, and not the 64-bit. Um, launcher. So you can run either the game or the editor and um, as soon as you run it, it's going to ask you, hey the scripts are outdated, would you like to rebuild now? And hit yes, you're going to get this new window that appears and it just tells you um, it's compiling the code for Renex game which is this folder right here and it says okay it's done. If you do screw up in this part in the code, it'll, it'll pop out a few warnings or errors uh, anytime you do. Uh, okay, so let's close that. Let's open up the editor. And let's try it out. Let's see our vehicle in game. Let's see all of our hard work come in and, and uh, be playable. It's a, it's a very satisfying feeling, and uh, every time I bring in a new thing, and uh, you get to play around with it for the first time, it's just it's an awesome feeling. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to open up the test map MP, which is uh, where I've done pretty much all of our vehicle testing in. In terms of how they drive around, that's why you have so many vehicles in here. And in case you didn't know, both of the hovercraft and the A-10 are actually flyable or drivable. So if you haven't tried them out, I, rec I recommend you do. So let's just right click anywhere um, and hit play from here. Uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna turn down the volume of the game. Harvester ready. Alright. So we're in game, inside the other. Um, I'm going to press F5 to bring up the console command. And the first thing I'm going to do is enable God mode. Um, because the next command that I use is going to spawn the vehicle directly on top of my head. If I don't have God mode enabled, I'm going to get crushed and I'm going to have to respawn somewhere else. So, uh, hit F5 again to bring up the console command. And uh, we need to use the summon console command to bring up the or to create the vehicle. So the class name is actually the path that it's defined in. So it's kind of like a directory. So we know that um, <coughs> this script, the RX vehicle super tank, is located in Renex game in the source folder. So what it's going to look like is Renex game dot file name. So if I'm just to type it out here, it'll look like Renex game, which is the name of the folder of this folder. And then that's and inside it is the name of the class, which is uh, RX Vehicle Super Tank. So it'll look like RX Vehicle Super Tank. So we're basically basically going to uh, copy this or type this into uh, the console command. So summon space and then type that path in there and boom, there you go. The tank is right there. So let's hop in. And look at that. Oh, that's a lot of recoil. <laughs> so that's what I meant by the recoil impulse. Um, it really kicks back the vehicle, but then it also uh, you can kind of see the barrel push back as well. So both components are working. Cool stuff, right? Um, okay, so that's pretty much it for this video tutorial, anyway. So um, the next one is all all about uh, fine tweaking the parameters and getting your vehicle to play and handle the way that you want it to. So that's it for now. I'm going to wrap it up and um, see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching and I hope uh, this wasn't this kind of showed you that it's really not all that intimidating to do any of this Unreal script programming to get your vehicle in, in game. Um, if I was just going through this uh, without explanations it probably would just take me maybe 20-30 minutes to get it up and running. So it's a very quick process um, don't worry about it, it freaking you out or making your brain hurt. It's not complicated at all. So uh, it's just a matter of knowing what's in uh, what each of those uh, variables do. So uh, that's it. I'm gonna wrap it up. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.